hi my name is Jennifer welcome back to my channel and welcome to my February wrap up so as of today we are on the 10th of February I think I've read three books um, and finished another one that I did start in January February has got off to a great start um, the first book I read was Falling Animals by Sheila Armstrong now I have done an individual book review video of this one spoiler free which I'll link down below so I'll try not to talk about it too much but this is my first five star of the year very exciting um, I'm so happy to have a five star so early on as well I only had like four or five stars in the whole of 2023 not including rereads um, so yeah, this is just wonderful. Um, this was on my radar anyway. It was on the TV show Between the Covers on the BBC. So I had a library hold on it, but I'd frozen the hold because I'm trying to like freeze my library holds so they don't all flood into the house at once. Um, but then this was mentioned in Jen the Librarian's Best Books of 23 video. So I had to prioritise it and I loved it. It's set on the coast of Ireland, um, following this sort of small community. The book is told in um, the chapters, each chapter sort of focuses on a different person within the community, and the book revolves around a man's body um, that has been found on the beach. It's not a murder mystery, it's not anything like that, but it's, um, we see how the different characters in some way tangentially sort of relate to that man or and how they the characters sort of relate to each other it's um it's wonderfully written it's pretty short and it really packs a punch i found it quite moving in the end i thought it was just really beautiful um i'm hoping it gets long listed for the women's prize because i think it would deserve it um but yeah check out my uh video for full thoughts which I'll link down below but I just I thought this was absolutely wonderful and um, then in the effort of reading books from my shelves which I'll say I think it's going pretty well I'm actually quite like excited picking up books from my shelves and reading them and I don't know why I haven't done it sooner um, but <laughs> I read A Severed Head by Iris Murdoch um, this is the fourth thing I've read by Iris Murdoch. I've read two novels before and one short story. I picked this up second hand a year or two ago. I actually sought it out online just because I was really intrigued by the title of A Severed Head. This is kind of an ugly cover, but anyway. Um, it's pretty short. It's only 200 pages long and it's a little bit wild. And it's one of those books where you finish it and you're like... I don't know what I just read, but I think I liked it. And I did really, really like this. Um, so it's about a, a man called Martin who is married and he is having an affair with a younger woman. Standard. Um, he he finds out like really early on, on in the book that his wife's going to leave him for somebody else. Um, and the book is really about the just the relationships between this sort of cast of characters. It does have elements of farce in it, in a way. Um, the main character, Martin, is quite unlikable. I do think Iris Murdoch writes a good, unlikable um, male main character. Um, I'm thinking of The Sea the Sea, which is one of the ones I have also read. The book is described in the introduction um, as being regarded by many as the most entertaining of uh, Iris Murdoch's novels and also perhaps the most flawless in ex execution, which I thought was interesting. I do think it's, um, I do think it's very, very good. And I think the fact that it's just a little bit shorter, because I feel a couple of the ones that I've read from her felt a little bit long when I read them. Um, whereas this, I just think like cuts to the chase and the characters are, none of them are particularly sort of likeable there are a few points in the book where i was like wait what is that what i think is that is that right is that what i think that is and it was and it was a little bit like why what um it was a bit wild um but i really liked it and I don't really know what to think of it because it's just it's quite 
odd, a little bit ridiculous, as I say, a little bit farcical. Um, I think it's sort of meant to be a little bit comedic. I say meant to be. I'm not saying it, it's not. I didn't laugh out loud, put it that way. Um, but I think it is it's sort of meant to be kind of a bit sort of ridiculous. Um, I think Iris Murdoch does character does characters really, really well from what I've read. Um, I would recommend that one. Then, also from my shelf, I read The Woman in the Purple Skirt by Natsuko Imamura. This is translated from Japanese by Lucy North. Um, this is quite a short book as well. It's about a... Our main character is the woman in the yellow cardigan and she develops a fascination with the woman in the purple skirt who she sort of observes from a distance. She gets to know her routine. She knows that like on a certain day she'll buy a cream bun and go and sit in the park and eat it for example and she'll sort of observe it at a distance. It's a story of I guess obsession, maybe jealousy. Um, it's it's quite plotty. It's more plotty than I was expecting it to be, certainly sort of in the second half, which I enjoyed. I thought it was good. I thought it had a strong and interesting ending. Um, the praise on the front from the different authors, we have praise from Leila Slamani, Sayaka Murata and Yoko Agawa. So I think that says a lot. Um, I really liked it. It's one that I probably would reread and sort of get different things out of. It's told in a... Some of the just some of the uh, quotes compare it to Convenience Store Woman by Sayaka Murata, and I can see, I can see why in terms of how the main character presents, um, and a certain sparseness to the language, um, but it's not really like that. Um, I really really liked it. Um, there are elements of kind of little elements of intrigue as well and um, I thought it was very good and then I finished listening to the audiobook of Girl, Woman, Other by Ben Dean Evaristo so this um, I started listening to that in January I first read this in physical form in 2019 when it was first published and at the time it was before it won the Booker Prize um, and when I picked it up the first time around, it was a random library pick. So I went into it with no expectations at all. And I absolutely loved it. So it was interesting to re revisit it now. Obviously, it has won the book yet. It's won a lot of praise. Um, and I, I can absolutely see why. I do think it's a remarkable, remarkable book. Um, it is about a, sort of a cast of characters, um, similar in a way to falling animals in terms of we have uh, sort of chapters told from various characters perspectives and we see the way in which the characters interlink so for example there might be a mother and a daughter or a teacher and a pupil or a grandmother um, and so as you get into the book you'll you'll some of the characters from earlier on will, will pop up and will appear and it's interesting because particularly when you have those people uh, so like say mother and a daughter and you hear from one perspective and then when you hear from the other character's perspective you sort of get to understand some of their motivations and so on um there was some stuff that i had kind of forgotten about from the first time around i'd forgotten how much queerness there is in the book particularly in the first sort of few chapters um which i thought was great and there is a lot of um there's quite a lot of like difficult topics as well explored so we have like loss of a child, um, sexual violence, domestic abuse. Um, I really love Bernadine Everisto's writing. I think she draws characters very vividly. Um, the audiobook was excellent. And what's interesting is, I was thinking about this, so the way this book is written on the page is... Um, it's almost, it's not quite, but it's almost moving towards being a bit poetic. So the sentences will sort of spread over a few lines. Um, and I know some people like don't like that kind of thing, which I can understand. And I think if I'd just listened to the audiobook, I've never seen a physical copy. I don't think I would have realised that that's how it looks on the page. However, I do think how it looks on the page has lent itself to being an excellent audiobook because I think it gives the book a certain rhythm when it's being read out. So I do think that 
does impact on the audiobook in a really positive way. Um, one thing that was interesting as well actually was since the first time I read this I have read Manifesto which is Bernadine Evaristo's memoir and it's interesting to see how some of what's in here is clearly based on her personal experiences and her background stuff that's happened to her in the past so that sort of adds a different element to it and um, I do love this book I think it's wonderful however I have a little niggle about this and um it was something that I felt when I first read it as well and now revisiting it that's sort of cemented it a little bit for me so I'm going to mention it it's I don't know um one of the chapters is about a character who is non-binary and I think some of that representation from what I can tell seems really really great um the main thing that kind of niggles at me with that is the title of the book girl woman other because we presume that the other refers to the non-binary character all the other characters um well there are men in the book but the vast majority of the characters in this book are women and they are black um so we assume then that the other refers to this non-binary character but obviously using the word other is quite dehumanizing and it's not something that you know like when you have these ticks boxes other should not be a, should never be a category when you are having to describe yourself i don't think so that just sort of i don't know i can't help it i just feel a niggle at that um and the other thing as well there is another trans character in the book who is a side character um but the way that she is described i do have an issue with um one or two sentences in particular I mean it felt kind of offensive if I'm being honest and I don't imagine like that's the intention um but that was just how I felt about that um I can't get away from it um so that's like that's my issue with this book um so yeah mm. but apart from that <laughs> I do think it's a wonderful wonderful book um I need to read more by Everisto. I've only read this and Mr. Loverman, which I really, really liked as well, actually. So I do need to pick up more. It's the 18th of February, I think, and I have two more books uh, that I have now finished. The first is Severance by Ling Ma. So this I picked up for um, Ben's Read Good prompt February which is February read a book about a pandemic or a post-apocalyptic book um so this was my choice and this is a book I've been looking forward to reading since I first heard about it um a few years ago and I bought a copy I think last year for myself so I had high hopes um I don't buy a lot of new books so when I do I I buy the ones that I think I'm really going to like and mm, this got off to a really good start i really like this to start with but by the second half of the book i must admit i was a bit bored um so what's it about the main character is called candy candy's chen and she um lives in new york um she goes to work she has a boyfriend um and this uh, sort of virus sweeps uh, sweeps the world the book is told in two timelines so we have um, I guess the current timeline is when the sort of pandemic has wiped out a, a lot of people and basically sort of destroyed civilization as we know it um, Candice is part of this small group of people small group of survivors who are sort of traveling around trying to find supplies to live off and that sort of thing and then the previous time frame is um the start of the pandemic so um you know restrictions coming in uh candace is one of the few who remains working in her 
office um, where she works. She's sort of promised a lot of money if she continues to go into the workplace whilst a lot of other people are no longer going in. Um, this book was first published in 2018. It was written before the COVID pandemic, obviously. Um, and so, yeah, it's interesting because a lot of what's in here felt somewhat familiar because of having been through the COVID pandemic. Um, and I don't know what my reaction to the book would have been had we not had COVID. So it may have been more of a novelty to read about um, the pandemic. But as it was, obviously, to a certain extent, um, a lot of it felt familiar. The use of the two timelines, for me, it meant that there was not really much of a sense of anticipation. And I guess clearly that's not what the author was intended. Otherwise, you know, the two timelines wouldn't have been used. But once you, as you're reading it, you know what the current timeline is. You know sort of the end result that society is going to basically collapse. Um, so you lose some of the kind of tension as you're reading the backstory because you know where we're going to end up. It is interesting to, um, you know, see some of the early signs of the pandemic and how people are reacting to it and sort of to compare that to what happened during COVID. Um, I feel like for me, this book tried to do a lot of things and it didn't quite work overall for me. It's described um, as being a, a moving family story, a sharp satire <clears throat> and a heartfelt tribute to the connections that drive us to do more than survive and for me it it did all of those things okay but I was left at the end of the book kind of feeling like what was the point of all that. Clearly I'm an outlier because most people do love this book um, but it just didn't quite work for me and by the end I, f I just found the main character kind of annoying and just dull and I wasn't really <laughs> invested in her story anymore or in sort of what was going to happen to her. So that was a little bit of a letdown. Um, <laughs> then I finished this short story collection. This is short stories from the 19th century uh, selected by David Stuart Davies and it's a little Wordsworth classic edition. I started reading this one in January um, and just finished it um, in February. So in my January wrap up I talked about a couple of the earlier stories in the collection that I really really liked. My favourite from the second half of the collection is a story by Bram Stoker which is called The Judge's House and I just thought it was excellent. A really really excellent horror story. Um, it's about a man who decides that he just needs to get away. He needs some time by himself. He's like preparing for an exam or something so he decides to go and stay in this village in this house that used to be owned by a judge who's since died and um, the judge's house and the locals say to him oh don't don't go to the judge's house no one ever goes to the judge's house and um, but of course he, he does go and stay in the judge's house and wouldn't you know it weird stuff happens um it's excellent there are sort of yeah just great horror elements horror set pieces and it visually you know as you're reading it you can picture it visually so vividly um it was just like a perfect horror story for me so that was the judge's house by bram stoker thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable hello again it's now the 23rd of february and i have read two books this week with somewhat mixed results um but we'll start off with the book that was my reread for february and this is we are all completely beside ourselves by karen joy fowler so i love this book this is a five star read um this was actually shortlisted for the booker prize in 2014 which somewhat surprises me because it doesn't strike me as an overtly book book and I mean that in the nicest possible way it's very readable it's very accessible um and sorry booker but that's not what you're known for um 
Karen Joy Fowler was shortlisted a couple of years ago for Booth as well, which I haven't read, but by the sounds of it, I think that is a very, very different book to this. So in this book, our main character is called Rosemary and um, the book is told from her perspective and it's about her life, her childhood and her family. Um, we know from the start of the book um, that her older brother, Lowell, she has not seen for 10 years and her sister Fern um, disappeared from her life 17 years ago and as we go through the book we sort of find out a bit more about about what happened what led up to that when the book opens um rosemary is at college and we see her sort of thinking back on things that happened when she was a young child and trying to sort of come to terms with things that have happened a lot of the book is about um, the nature of childhood and memory and the reliability or unreliability of that um, and how things that you experience as a child when you grow up you see them sort of through a different lens and um, this is really about the, the family and in particular the sibling relationship between Rosemary and Fern is a really really lovely sibling sibling relationship um there are also sort of certain themes explored in the book which i won't specify because that would be a spoiler um but that i thought were really really interesting and in many ways this is a book not quite like any book i've read before um the quotes on the back are from there are sort of blurbs by three different authors on the back, which I thought was interesting because these three authors are all, I think, very different authors. So the uh, the, the praise on the back is from Sophie Hanna, Barbara Kingsolver and Carla Hassani. So I thought that was interesting that they all sort of blurb this book because I think it's a book that would appeal to a lot of readers. There are some kind of slight mystery elements I mean it's not a mystery book but there is sort of a little uh, a pull of intrigue that keeps you um through the book um if you like books about sort of family dynamics and uh sibling relationships and um the nature of memory um what I would say is don't Try not to read too many reviews of this book if you are interested in reading it because I had a look on Storygraph. I normally look at the reviews on Storygraph after I've finished the book and there is a few on there that do spoil certain things and I feel like this is a book that potentially you could be quite easily um, spoiled for. So I would say try to go into this not knowing too, too much about it. Um, but yeah, I loved it. I just thought it was a really, really wonderful, wonderful story. Um, so yes. And then the other book that I read is one of the most disturbing books I've ever read in my life. And that was Tender is the Flesh by Agustina Bastarica, who is an Argentinian author. This is translated from Spanish by Sarah Moses. So obviously I knew going into this book that it was going to be disturbing because it's about cannibalism that's not that's not a spoiler um but it was disturbing in that was disturbing but it was disturbing in other ways that I wasn't necessarily expecting as well this was a random library pick which I'm trying not to do because I'm trying to read from my shelves but when I went in a couple of weeks ago to pick up something I'd reserved this was just sitting there on the display I think they must have got it in quite recently because I know when I've looked for it in the past they haven't had it um, they haven't had a copy in stock so I just had to pick it up um so what's this about our main character is called Marcus and he works in a slaughterhouse for humans so in this world animals have all sort of contracted some virus that means that their meat is no longer edible it'll be poisonous to humans so we people have started breeding humans and farming humans for meat um so there is sort of this separation between humans who are sort of working and 
eating the meat and the, the meat that is being bred. So he works in this in the slaughterhouse. It is very descriptive. Um, I thought it was really well done. I thought it was very effective. The way that like sort of the human meat is described. They humans are when they are for food are called heads, and we see how some of the terminology is changed to sort of put a distance between the fact that it's humans that are being eaten here. Um, there were certain points where I almost kind of forgot we were talking about humans and then I had to remind myself um, that, that we were. I don't eat meat anyway, I'm a veggie. Um, I think meat's kind of gross. Um, but I imagine if you were a meat eater, it would probably put you off eating meat because the stuff in here is just like, really awful um and yeah um the other disturbing stuff that i kind of wasn't quite expecting there is sexual violence in the book and there is animal cruelty as well so just to mention those things because those were like this was a really quick read and quite a short book if it had been longer i potentially would have dnf'd it because it was a lot but it was also a page turner so i just I kind of just wanted to get to the end and get it kind of over with and see where we were going to end up. Um, I'm still not sure what my overall thoughts are because I can't say I enjoyed it. And that's not just because obviously it's a very disturbing book. I'm not sure if, I don't know, I'm not sure if it quite worked for me. What I do think it does really well is... It sort of explores how individuals react to and deal with um, the fact that this is now happening and how by sort of it becoming legal to farm and eat humans, the other boundaries that are pushed as a result of that. So, and I won't go into detail, but there is like much more horrific stuff that happens in the book by certain characters sort of as a result of you know a certain thing being acceptable and then sort of the, the horrors of what else people will do um are explored as well i yeah i mean i think i, I think it is a good book because i'm clearly disturbed by it um but i don't think i would ever reread it um yeah it's uh mm, yeah that was that it's now the end of february and i realized after i filmed last week's clip that i haven't had any dnfs yet in february and i was thinking to myself maybe this is the first month ever when i will have no dnfs and of course i jinxed myself because i do have a dnf but i feel like one dnf in a whole month is pretty low for me anyway a dnf death song by jürgen brecker which is translated from norwegian by stephen t murray um so this is a crime thriller which i got in my advent calendar like maybe like a year ago could even possibly have been the year before that um and i've read like just under half um it's about a serial killer who is killing women and is like removing their voice boxes for some like unknown reason the police are investigating we do also have a historical timeline from like the 1700s which to be honest i didn't really understand what was going on there but anyway um so i've dnf'd it because it was kind of a bit too gruesome for me i'm not thrilled with reading just more books about serial killers who who kill women um and ultimately i was just not really compelled to keep picking it up like, i don't think it was a bad book i think if it's your if it, this is your kind of thing you probably really like it but it just wasn't quite for me so that is a dnf um then i'll mention this one briefly because i've started reading this um this is Granter's collection of best young British novelists and this is the 2013 edition so they bring this out every 10 years and it's a selection of who they deem to be the sort of most exciting up-and-coming British novelists. Um, 
I picked this up in a charity shop a while ago. So I've started reading this. I've read the first two stories in here. I say stories. I had wrongly assumed these were all short stories. Some of them are short stories, but some of them are just excerpts from books because, of course, not all authors write short stories, obviously. Anyway, the first one I read was by Camilla Shamsey called Vipers. Didn't really like it. Um, the second one I read it was by Ned Bowman called Glow. <clears throat> and that is an excerpt of the book called Glow, which, to be honest, I'd never heard of. Apparently, the author has been long listed for the book before. Um, but it was sort of, it was about this, like, new drug that gets developed. Um, and it was queer. And I just quite liked it. So that was... Um, yeah, that was quite good. So I will continue to read that sort of probably quite slowly. Um, then I read Four Days Wonder by A.A. A. Milne, he of Winnie the Pooh fame. Um, this is one I picked up in a charity shop a while ago. I picked up three books by A.A. A. Milne in the same shop. One of them I already read, which was a short story collection, which I really, really liked. This one is sort of a, a bit of a farcical take on a crime book. Um, so the book opens with this young woman, what's her name, Jenny, who um, finds her, the body of her aunt, like, dead in the living room. And she sort of um, inadvertently sort of contaminates the evidence, realises what she's done and just does a runner. So, so she's, like, on the run from the police um, and you've got the police trying to sort of solve the mystery of what's happened uh, to the dead aunt and also where Jenny's gone. So it was quite amusing to start with. I will say the second half dragged a little bit for me. It felt a bit tired. Um, but it was all right. It was all right. I preferred the short story collection that I read um, by A.A. Mill last year. I've got another one on my shelves. The two people which I think is a bit more serious about like a married couple and um, but that one that was okay I'm probably not going to reread it that can go to the charity shop then I read this little book this is an elderly lady is up to no good by Helen Turston translated from Swedish is it Swedish? Yeah, it's translated from Swedish uh, by Marlene Delargy. Helpfully translated is on the cover. Um, this is tiny. Look, this basically almost like fits in the palm of my hand. I wasn't expecting it to look like this when I picked it up from the library. It looks so cute. Um, so I heard Bob the Booker talk about this book ages ago. And then um, recently I saw that my library had acquired a copy. So, of course, I wanted to read it. Um, and it's short stories, which I had maybe known about but had forgotten about but that was quite a nice surprise because I do like short stories and this was really really wonderful I really really enjoyed this so these stories are all about Maud who is an 88 year old woman um, she lives by herself in this apartment and um, she's lived in this apartment all her life and she lives there rent free there was some sort of deal that happened when her family moved into the apartment that meant as long as she's alive or still lives there she can get it rent free so like the owners of the apartment really wanted to leave but she just won't she's really stubborn um but Maud Maud kills people and um yeah so the story sort of follow her and her life and the people who um who she decides to kill she you don't feel sorry really for the people that she kills because you know for the most part they do deserve it not that i am condoning murder but um but you know you're on Maud's side really she's a great character this was a great little book i really really enjoyed it and i think there is another one in the series what's it called and this author has read written other stuff as well let's see the other one is called an elderly lady must not be crossed so yeah that was just a really like fun little read thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it and then i'll mention this one briefly because i haven't finished it so our full thoughts will be in my march wrap up but i'm reading tomorrow tomorrow and tomorrow by gabrielle zevin for my library book club i'm over halfway through now and i'm thoroughly enjoying it really really enjoying it um so yeah so i'll talk about that more in my march wrap up so that's february i think that was a pretty decent reading month i mean i literally can't remember what i read at the start of the month this is why i do my wrap-ups in this way couldn't tell you couldn't tell you what i read a few weeks ago um <laughs> i think it's been a good reading month um let me know what you've uh, been reading thank you for watching and i'll speak to you again very soon bye <laughs>